I love what you're talking about because as an entrepreneur, you learn the game in a way where you realize that, yo, America is built on entrepreneurialism, but to run, it runs on slavery. An entrepreneur is a person who's not willing to wear the chain. Explain that to me. Not willing to wear the chain. That's where it got me at. Okay, well, think, think about it. We were taught lies back in my generation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old you are. How old are you, 20s? 31. 31? Shout out to you. We about the same age, right? So, when I went to school, I was taught you go to school to get a good job. Okay. That was the lie. Because... I, don't, I wasn't... I got to stop you there. I wasn't never taught... I wasn't never taught that. Good I was told that I need to go to school, get an education, but it wasn't never necessarily inputted and implanted in me to go to school so I can get a good job. Like I said, salute to you, because I was taught that in school. So, indoctrination of our nation through education said that you had to go through the system to be allotted into the system. So we became gears to the bigger machine. Okay. An entrepreneur would say, no, I'm not going to be a gear. I'm going to build my own machine. And through that type of thinking, the chain, whether it's mental, I got to go to work, I got to get up and go to work, I got to get a good job, or physical, hitting the assembly line, clocking in, you have effectively turn that around and said as an entrepreneur, I don't want to fit in, I want to create. Okay. How does that reflect your development as an entrepreneur to turn away from the norm and make something happen for you? Well, since you put it like that, I take that same thinking and I am the gear of the company companies I am part of the gear um, I feel like I am the body so whatever you put out is what you're gonna get back and that's just as simple as that across the board it's if you don't hustle the hustle is the footwork the late nights the going to meetings at X Y and Z time dealing with the pressure between I'm gonna call it the bread and butter to make you to make sure you got the funds so you can fund your uh, your investment. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where it, that's what you have to do. You have to be part of it. You can't sit there and it's just like now if you work a nine to five people, you go to work. You working for them so you can do what you want to do. America ain't gonna give you nothing. You gonna have to work for it. True. So I put the skin in the game as far as my company with making it go forward. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to talk to anybody and everybody about whatever I'm doing so that way I can bring more revenue in the door. Vice versa. These companies that's out here, they they want you to work for them. So For nothing, by the way. Pretty much for nothing. And you're helping them. You're not helping yourself. And I want to compare self -help myself. Is to the self help is the most important thing. Okay, I want to compare myself to you, not as a competition, okay. just to build. Okay. You know what made me an entrepreneur? Besides meeting my partner, my faith. Because by reading the context of faith, I realized that the way we live is so anti faithful that I had to try something different. Now, Heritage Hip Hop has been with me since I was like a youngin, because I always wanted to work for Rock Me Games. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Didn't happen, but I always had the idea. And in getting into my faith, I'm a Christian by trade. Absolutely. So, I read about how interest is evil. I learned how when Christ flipped the tables, he became an enemy of the state because he dealt with money. Interest being evil, this state of wealth being a friend, but not the love of it, because the love of it would turn you to do things devious for more money. I also learned in my faith that it is wicked to have debt and to make people work under the debt system. Because in the year of Jubilees, 
there was a year when everybody's debt was wiped clean and the people who were quote unquote indentured or slave, whatever you want to say, because people don't really understand that in context of American slavery, they had a chance to leave and start their life free of debt, free of interest, free of charge, or they can stay, they can stay or live together with the person that employed them. Those things help me go on because I see that through being an entrepreneur, your life is not governed by another person's opinion. Your life is governed by your connection to your wealth, which is yourself, your health, and the most high above you. How did entrepreneurialism come to you and made you want to go that step and walk the walk of the American gangster? <laughs> I use that for a certain reason. We're gonna do that. So. <laughs> um, I just need to hear the question one more time. How did that? Those experience, like my experiences, fuel me. Mm -hmm. What experiences fueled you to take on the role of entrepreneur and live that lifestyle? Once again, as the American gangster. Because I have a vision. I have a vision of people coming together and being able to. Uh, do more and in order for me to do that I have to make sure my people are good um, it's kind of hard to break that well no it's kind of self-explanatory you're a socialist mm -hmm. you're a person that believes I'm only good if my team is good but America doesn't work that way America is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer we are capitalists under the gaze of Reaganomics which is racist fueled economic drain of the inner city. And hip hop, to me, is what makes us great because when they, everything they took away, we made something of it to stop the killing, stop the violence, stop the bullshit that was being used to kill our people. And with that came the business mind. So you, my friend, are the American gangster. Some people call it the American dream, which means you don't take no and you make the door where people try to shut a door in your face. I don't stop. Talk I keep about going. It. Talk about it. Like, I was never taught to stop. You know, and that's part of what the brand is. Get it done. Like, you don't make no excuses. So, in order for you to get it done, like, there's a process. Like, we have a triangle, it's called speak into existence, grind harder, and get it done. And neither one of that part of that triangle, you don't find any excuses within. If you look like if you look at it at the American dollar or how you wanna say the government, they put that that uh what the fuck is that shit? What is it called? The, the pyramid there and then they put the, the eye inside like that's supposedly evil like that's supposedly evil but they use that against us because that's if you if you go back to your heritage we yeah. had pyramids like they buried us in tombs like that represents us and by them putting that eye there how I'm looking at it now and thinking about it they're spying on our every move, so they're taking taking us and using us against us. And but we what we have to do is find a way to actually get in front of them and block them from what we do, like our mindsets and you know in the direction that we're driving. You talking about the Eye of Horus? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you something. Why did you choose the pyramid or the triangle as your representation your example? Because they 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 took us. Ooh. They took us. Like this land, this land is not ours. You think so? It's not ours. Think so? I know so. Sure. You know your roots. Yep. Okay. Like that, I, I, I feel like. No, not even feel like I know. This is my ancestors was not born on this, right here. Sure. Africa. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll talk about that later. All right. Not for this. Okay. Because I want to stay on topic with your brand. Because okay. we can go philosophical, spiritual, deep, <laughs> medical, whatever. Because I can tell you, it's a good chance your people were already here. But everybody, yeah. we all say everybody comes from Africa. Yeah, everybody people, came from Africa. I feel like this. 
real quick. African American cover a wide span of people. This is a false narrative. Exactly. Now, the only people who are not considered African American are Caucasian. Absolutely correct. And that's like a whole another segment right there that we can go into at a later date. Because <laughs> I don't want nobody feeling any type of way. I want people to understand like there's more to it than what people believe it to be. Of course. So. You know why we don't, we're not taught that? Because that would kill your entrepreneurial spirit. Because if you lull the people to sleep, you're able to sing the song. And if you're able to sing the song while you're sleeping, then subconsciously you're training the mind, the body, and the soul. Okay. So, by not having the narrative correct, you're able to create a new narrative that changes the story. So let's change the story to what people know in this segment off this way. As an entrepreneur, you take control of your life in the way that other people beg for. Freedom is the road seldom traveled by the multitude. How does entrepreneurialism make you free instead of being indebted as an employee? I don't like working for nobody. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't mind working for people. With people. If we're working with people if we're all eating at that same pie together. Word. Like, I don't, I don't like working for any, I don't like working for people because it's not yours. You can't call it yours. You're nine to five. If you don't own it, it's not yours. If they making a thousand dollars an hour off of you, but only giving you twenty dollars out of that hour, you you stuck. You gotta find a way to get out. Whether you still making that twenty dollars an hour so you can build your own brand or your own your own generational wealth for the people that's coming behind you, then I would suggest that. But working with people, I don't suggest. My company will tell you, they already know. I don't plan to stay there forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. Right. 